Good morning. Today launches the Diocese of Trenton's annual Catholic appeal. I'd like to direct your attention to the screen as our Bishop, Most Reverend David M. O'Connell, invite you to learn about the appeal and the priorities of our diocese. Each year at this time, 
We reach out to you and we ask that you partner with us through the annual Catholic appeal. You are the eyes, the ears, the hands, the feet of Jesus who help us to reach out from our parish and our diocese to those in need. A gift to the appeal helps fund vital ministry programs and services of the 99 parishes in our four county uh, dioceses. We know from experience how important it is for St. Rose of Lima Parish to be available to those who are struggling with their faith and their everyday trials. With your generous contributions to the annual Catholic Appeal, we can support youth and family ministries, Catholic education, vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and the charitable works of our extended diocesan family. We ask you to prayerfully consider sharing your faith by making a gift to the annual appeal, which will ensure these ministries and more will continue to exist. There are cards in the uh, church there in the back, and we invite you to just take one and to consider a gift to the diocese. But I think more importantly, and this is off script, this is my own uh, thoughts on it, you have to also remember the parish itself. Since the pandemic, the collections have gone down 35%, but the bills haven't. So if you're able, even more importantly, I, I think, now this is only my personal opinion, more importantly than the annual appeal to the diocese is to also help the parish as best you can. God bless you. Good morning and welcome. Please stand.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of God our Father, and his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Today's Gospel, Jesus does more than heal a leper. By stretching out his hand and touching him, Jesus restores his dignity as a person. As we prepare for this liturgy, let us call to mind the times we have excluded others in our lives and failed to treat them with dignity. Lord Jesus, you heal those who come to you. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the joy of salvation. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are worthy of all honor and praise. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Cleanse and restore us, O God, and heal us continually from the sinfulness that divides us and from the prejudice and discrimination by which we degrade ourselves and dishonor your image in others. Help us to stretch out our hands in love, especially to those our society scorns, and to recognize in their faces an eager welcome in every heart the very image of Christ, blood-stained on the cross. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has a, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Uh, Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourselves to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof to them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Leprosy was probably the most dreaded disease in the ancient world. 
Today, with modern medicine, there are less than 20,000 lepers in the world. I think that's the, the figure I read. And most of them are in faraway places. And yet, I think leprosy exists more real, in more reality than we accept. Not physical leprosy, but spiritual leprosy. Interesting, when you look at the Jewish laws, there are some 614 of them. Many of them cover the way lepers have to treat themselves and treat others. We heard part of it in that first reading today. Keeping their head uncovered, shouting that they were unclean. But two of the laws really struck me. One, they have to keep the lower half of their face covered. And the other is that they have to keep two meters, which is about six feet, away from anybody else. I said, we're, we're doing that right now. Yeah. And I think that's something maybe we can learn from our masks and our social distancing and all the other things that we do, is that whatever we do has to be done with realization, with awareness of other people. That's why the lepers had to do it. That's why they had to keep distance and all the rest of it, so they wouldn't hurt others. And that's the very reason that we do social distancing and wearing our masks and the rest of it. Not for us, as much as for others. I, I said before, I think there's a lot of spiritual leprosy in our world. Because when you look at the physical disease, one of the main characteristics is a loss of feeling. They lose feeling, particularly in hands and feet. But generally, it spreads to their whole body. They just don't feel. And that's why lepers would get cut and not know they were cut. And that's why they would get infections and lose limbs. A lack of feeling. Is there a lack of feeling in our world today? Do the people in our lives feel? Or have they, we've gotten to a point that we're so cold, so indifferent to others that our worldview only comes around ourselves? I think in the healing that Jesus did in the gospel, the most important thing that he did was reach out and touch the man. Touch the man. Saying to the man, you are important. You are a human being. You are not less than any of the rest of us who do not carry the disease. You are just as important, just as special, and you deserve our love, our kindness, our care, just as much as anybody else would. Are there people in your life, are there people in my life, who are lepers, who we would not reach out and touch? Are there people in our hearts that we've made ourselves closed off from? Family members, neighbors, people who are different from us, different race or creed or color or way of life. Are there people that we consider lepers and stay away from? Or do we see others as they really are. Children of God, made to his image and likeness the same as you and I are. 
We're coming into the Lenten season. And if one thing we do during those 40 days of Lent to become a habit that we can take with us forever should be to reach out to whoever it is we think is untouchable. To reach out to others with an openness of heart. To reach out to others and to let them know that they are special. That they are important that they are God's children. But before we can do that, there's something else that all of us have to do. And that's accept the fact that we're special, that we're important, and accept the fact that God loves each one of us as if we were the only person he ever made. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus touched the leper and healed him. We know that our God is a God of boundless compassion. Secure in his desire to restore and heal, let us bring our needs before him. May God's holy church, strengthened by the kindness and empathy of God, be a community where all are welcome to worship in joy and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May those entrusted with authority here and around the world always keep in mind the effects of their decisions on all of the people in their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May the sick be healed, the outcasts be welcomed, and those who feel unworthy feel the healing power of Jesus and know their worth as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. May all married couples be filled with the spirit of love and respect kindness and generosity, patience and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. May our parish community, even in the midst of struggle and suffering, know the joy of living life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. May Leo Cadia Burt Budnick, Patricia Rocco, Evelyn Weber, and all our faithfully departed come with joy into the presence of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. May God grant these needs which we hold in our hearts. For these needs and for Josephine Klapauchi, Lucy Lespinese, Wilhelmina Rosile, 
Rosa Beretta, Marion and Emile Kucher, and all the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Father, God of love and mercy, we offer our prayers, our petitions to you today. And we pray today especially for married couples. This is the world day of prayer for married couples. And so I ask now a special blessing for all married couples, for all who are in love, those who are engaged, those who have given their lives in love and service for others. And we pray, almighty, eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church as his spouse. Lord, on this World Marriage Day, look with favor on these married couples that are gathered here and those who are watching at home, whom you have united in marriage as they ask for your help and the protection of the Virgin Mary. We pray that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other and that they will resolve to be one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near them to help them. In their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. In their joys, let them see that you are the source and the completion of happiness. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. In this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and restore us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. With love, we celebrate his death. With living faith, we proclaim his resurrection. With unwavering hope, we await his returning glory. Now with all the choirs of angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we sing. Who comes? 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. Let your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints, that we praise you and give you glory through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sin, but on the faith of your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Now share with one another that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those at home who are physically unable to receive Eucharist at this time, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. Ask Christ to come and to touch your heart, to bring healing to your heart, making it a heart like his, a heart burning with love for everyone. Lord Jesus, you have given us your real presence in both word and Eucharist. At this time, I'm not able to receive you sacramentally in the Eucharist, but I can receive you in my heart spiritually. Come to me, Lord. Fill me with your presence. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, transform me. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash over me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within your wounds. Never let me be separated from you. Defend me from all evil. Make me an instrument of your love, your peace, and your joy to everyone I meet. O oh, my Savior, my only hope, I place all my trust in you. I believe in you. I hope in you. I love you. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. And we pray through Christ our Lord, we have the following announcements for the week. Ushers are urgently needed for all the Ash Wednesday services. Also, ministers and lectors are needed for the 5 p.m. prayer service. Please call the parish office if you are available to serve. The Columbian Club and the Freehold Knights of Columbus are holding a German night takeout dinner fundraiser next Saturday, February 20th. Please see today's bulletin for more information. My friends, today we sing our Alleluia's for the last time. As we put our Alleluia banner to rest, we're reminded that Wednesday we begin our Lenten journey to Holy Week and Easter. This is the time that we seek to follow Christ more faithfully, to do the work of justice and peace, and to remain faithful to the gospel. As well, we look forward to the holy night of Easter when our Alleluia's break forth announcing the resurrection of the Lord.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he fill you with healing in mind, in body, and spirit. May he grant you peace. May he give you every blessing now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eager to follow Christ to the kingdom, let us go forth in peace to love, to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week.